friends, welcome to Vlogmas 2023. Today is day one. So today is December 12th and it is Tuesday. I did Vlogmas a few years, or two years ago, excuse me, in 2021. And I did it from December 1st up till Christmas. And I just couldn't do that this year. Two years ago, I didn't do the Jingle Ball, which has been all consuming for the past month or so. <laughs> And anyways, I just didn't have time, so I thought, I can do 12 days. The 12 days of Christmas. The 12 days before Christmas, I should say, because the 12 days of Christmas to me, they actually, it's Christmas starts on Christmas Day. Anyways, so welcome to my channel. I hope that you enjoy my uh, Vlogmas this year. What I plan on doing is this one, this first one's gonna be a little bit short because I'm really crushed for time today. But every day there'll be a giveaway. Also, uh, Kevin will be joining me for most of the days. Also, the speed painting videos, I will be doing voiceovers. I have this amazing book that I will start reading to you today as you watch me paint a Christmas painting. And it talks about St. Nicholas and like his childhood and, and all through his life, how he became an amazing bishop and where he got, you know, how he, how he became known for being the gift giver. And then how that story morphed into Santa Claus that we know today. And then also this book is really cool. It goes through, sorry, my dog's drinking water. She loves to be in my videos in only sound. She doesn't really want to be in the video. She just wants to be known that she's there, I think. Anyways, it talks about different Christmas songs, the origin of the song, when the song was written, who wrote the song, and there's some fascinating stories in there. So I don't know that the book will take up the entire 12 days. So if not, I have some other things in mind. Uh, like I said, Kevin will be joining me some of the days, most of the days, hopefully. And we will be just doing like Christmas questions that uh, people have asked us in my Patreon group and also possibly like a newlywed game, I think would be super fun. Maybe we can do that one of those days. So that is the gist of what I plan on doing for Vlogmas this year. And I just want to say thank you for being here and I hope you join me for all 12 days before Christmas. The year was 2080 AD. This was 21 years prior to Armenia's King Teradot the Great, rejecting local polytheist pagan religions and declaring Christianity as his country's official state religion, the first nation ever to do so. It was 22 years prior to the violent persecution of Christians by Roman Emperor Diocletian, which was the worst of the 10 major persecutions during Christianity's first 300 years. It was also 33 years prior to the Roman Emperor Constantine's the Great of official toleration to the Christian religion in 313 AD. This same year, 280 AD, in the town of Patera, located in the region of Lycia, Asia Minor, present-day Turkey, a child was born to a wealthy elderly couple who had been unable to have children. The child's name was Nicholas. All legend is based in some fact, and the facts which history records is that in the third, fourth century, there lived a person of reputation named Nicholas on the northeast coast of the Mediterranean Sea in an area known as Asia Minor, that he was significant enough to be made a bishop and spiritual enough to be called by the title of saint. In researching the background of St. Nicholas, many sources had bits and pieces of the stories of his life, but the record passed down by the Greek Orthodox Church appears to elaborate the most on the details of his career. This would appear appropriate as Nicholas lived in that area of the world. Some would contend that this history is mixed with legend, but being unqualified to distinguish between the two, this author has decided to relate the essence of the story as received. According to the Greek Orthodox history, Nicholas's parents, Theophanes and Nana, 
received him as their son after many years of prayer, similar to Abraham and Sarah of the Bible. They considered this child a direct gift from God with a special calling to help people. They therefore named him Nicholas, which meant in Greek, victor or hero of the people. Even as an infant, Nicholas displayed remarkable instances of a special call on his life. As he grew, he was known for his virtue, especially in the study of scripture, abstinence, and temperance. He began fasting every Wednesday and Friday, a habit which he has continued throughout his life. He was chaste and pure in his thoughts, sometimes spending entire days and nights in church praying and reading divine books. The bishop of the town, Patera, was Nicholas's uncle, whom Nicholas was named after. He noticed how Nicholas avoided worldly pursuits and therefore advised his parents that their son may be called to the service of God. Nicholas then entered the nearby monastery of Sion and trained for the ministry under his uncle. When Nicholas was ordained, his uncle pronounced a prophecy. I see, brethren, a new sun rising above the earth and manifesting in himself a gracious consolation for the afflicted. Blessed is the flock that will be worthy to have him as its pastor, because this one will shepherd well the souls of those who have gone astray, will nourish them on their passages of piety, and will be a merciful helper in misfortune and tribulation. As time went on, his uncle, the bishop, desired to go on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. He handed oversight of the church to his nephew, Nicholas. Nicholas was known for keeping all-night vigils, remaining unceasing in prayer and fasting. He took the responsibility of the church seriously and cared for the congregation the same way the bishop had. It was at this time that Nicholas's parents died during the plague, leaving him a substantial inheritance. He was very generous in distributing it to the poor and needy, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and ransoming those taken captive by debt to moneylenders. Nicholas is almost notably remembered for helping the family of a nobleman of Patera who had gone bankrupt. Ruthless creditors not only took the nobleman's property, but threatened to take his three beautiful daughters as well. The father's only hope was to marry off his daughters quickly before the creditors could take them, thereby saving them from a life of white slavery and prostitution. Unfortunately, he did not have money for the girls' dowries, which were necessary for them to marry. Nicholas heard of this dilemma, and late one night, threw a bag of gold in the family's window to save the eldest daughter from the fate of an outcast. The news spread across town, and she was soon lawfully married. Shortly thereafter, Nicholas did the same, rescuing the second daughter. The father is said to have exclaimed, O merciful God, author of our salvation, who hast redeemed me by thine own blood, and now redeemest my gold in my home and my daughters from the nets of the enemy. Do thou thyself show me the minister of thy mercy and thy philanthropic goodness. Show me this earthly angel who preserves us from sinful perdition, so that I may know who hath snatched us from poverty, which oppresses us and delivers us from evil thoughts and intentions. O Lord, by thy mercy secretly done for me by the generous hand of thy servant, unknown to me, I can give my second daughter lawfully in marriage, and with this escape the snares of the devil, who desired by a tainted gain or even without it to increase my great ruin. Finally, when Nicholas threw the bag of gold in to save the third daughter, which supposedly landed in one of her stockings set out by the fireplace to dry, the father ran outside and caught him, saying, If the Lord, great in mercy, had not raised me up through thy generosity, then I, the unfortunate father, already long ago would he lost together with my daughters in the fire of Sodom. Now we are saved through thee and delivered from a horrible fall into sin. Nicholas, who wanted the glory to only go to God, made the father swear with an oath not to reveal where the gifts came from while Nicholas was living. This was the basis for the later tradition of secret gift giving in the anniversary of Nicholas's death.
I hope you enjoyed that story. It's fascinating to me to learn about St. Nicholas and the things that became, you know, our tradition for Christmas now. So very interesting. Anyways, so the giveaway is a print of your choice, an 8x10 print of your choice from my Etsy shop. In order to be in the drawing, which I will be doing tomorrow, God willing that I get the next <laughs> Vlogmas done, um, I need you to tell me your favorite Christmas memory as a child. And your keyword will be Christmas. So just make sure you use in your sentence the word Christmas. Good luck. See you tomorrow. Bye.